Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Rudy Hightower. I'm one of the uh, PhD candidates here at the, at the John Glenn College of Public Affairs. A uh, little bit of background, because uh, as you can see, I'm an older student. Uh, don't call me older, you can call me like a more mature student. I, I feel much better about that. Uh, but actually, I'm a retired lieutenant commander in the United States Navy. I thought 22 years was just about enough of time spent in the Navy, uh, and then decided to uh, do a little um, work and, uh, and then go back to school so that I could finish school. So where there's no more school left, uh, so I decided to uh, look at PhD programs, and I found the John Glenn College I had exactly what I wanted. I do a lot of research in Black Sea regional security. I've been to Ukraine 12, 13 times. Uh, I think I've been to the Crimea Peninsula, which you know now is part of Russia. Um, ish, um, and did a lot of uh, international travel, 22 countries, lived in Japan for a couple of years, I uh, did the whole Desert Shield, Desert Storm thing uh, uh, back in the day. So my main research interest is national security policy, but the actual capstone that I'll be teaching is related to modeling and simulation, specifically nonlinear modeling and simulation. And I'll go through uh, just about four or five hundred slides right now, and then you'll, you'll pretty much have it down pat. So the objective is uh, cut right out of what David just said, uh, so I'm not going to go uh, over this, but uh, anytime you see a slide and there's red, focus on the red. Right? And uh, when it comes to policy modeling and simulation, what we're dealing with is decision support and decision sciences, helping policy makers, decision makers make decisions. Okay? And then what are decision sciences? This is what the, the whole concept and the whole raison d'etre of, of our particular capstone is all about helping making decisions. Decision sciences are related to mathematical modeling and simulation. Uh, the coolest thing about it is you can test and retest certain models that you'll build, and in the capstone, you will build some models. And you'll actually test them. You'll get to do what's called what-if scenario planning. So you can run a model, and then uh, you can flip a switch in the model, turn on recession. The, 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 we're actually in a recession, see what the results are going to do over time. And the benefit of having a what-if scenario planning capability is that you can actually see some results, projected results, without having to wait, say, three years or five years to implement uh, actual policy. Right? So you don't have to wait. So that's one of the benefits of modeling and simulation. We're going to use a lot of uh, computer tools to run these simulations. The specific one that we use is called uh, um, Stella Architect. And uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. What we kind of want you to do uh, in the, throughout the capstone, get familiar with modeling and simulation, but we also want you to get um, some good experience, and we're going to have a whole semester, so you'll be actually very well uh, versed in modeling and simulation. Uh, getting into mastery, that'll take some extra time, but uh, we think you can get there too if, uh, if you apply yourself, right? So why learn this modeling and simulation that we're going to show you in our modeling and simulation capstone? These are the kind of people that use it, right? So there's another along with their econometric modeling, with your GIS modeling, with your degree, and your just overall fantastic personality. When you go out into the job market, this will be another tool in your resume toolbox. Right? So you recognize some of these icons, right? some of these logos. Right? And I had this one just an hour ago. Right? <laughs> these are some of the actual companies. You can see that they use it. Here's another group of companies. Recognize that it's both public and private organizations that use modeling and simulation. Right? And you guys are all familiar with NASA, right? the rocket science, right? the rocket scientists. And when there's a big problem that America is like, look, we got to solve this problem. We got to go to NASA because they got the answers. right? If NASA can't figure out a problem, they go to the national labs. That's where the super brainiac McBrainiacs are at. Right? But they use the same type of computerized modeling and simulation. Here's just a couple more. And of course, my, my United States Navy and yours, taxpayers, uh, use a lot of modeling and simulation. And actually, that's why I kind of got into modeling and simulation. We did a lot of this in the Navy uh, when we actually do military exercises to prepare for war or just prepare for, for um, training evolutions. But in the Navy, we just called it work. I didn't know it actually had a name until I came here to the, the Glenn College. Right? OK, so this is actually how it's used. The models that are built. Are, are like the engines that run behind data visualization. So in the capstone, we'll talk a lot about data visualization, how to turn your data into animations and 2D uh, graphics. In this case, these are some models uh, that if you hit the run button, these things will all move. You can actually take, um, you can model like six months of time in 30 second 
in a 30 second simulation, right? And that's how companies decide where to put turnstiles and subways, uh, when to expand a particular restaurant. Uh, in this example here, the upper left, um, this is very, very popular in modeling and simulation where hospitals, emergency departments run through these simulations so they can figure out time-wise how many doctors do they need, how many physician assistants, and how many nurses to cover a specific um, workload or a specific patient load. And this is how you kind of run those kind of uh, simulations. Okay. And uh, this is our own Glenn School proprietary framework for how we're going to actually uh, walk you through the modeling and simulation process. It pretty much starts with storytelling, iterative storytelling. I'm in the capstone, I'm going to force you to read a book chapter that I wrote um, that talks about iterative storytelling. You have that story, you turn it into a bounded mental model in your brain. You're going to transfer it onto a computer. Then you're going to simulate that model that you build. Then you're going to present it. Because what you'll find in, in modeling and simulation, the models that you build, that's for us, us nerds that, that know the modeling process. You wouldn't present the model necessarily to the decision maker. They'll kick you out of the room and be like, look, don't come back. But what you're going to present is something that is much more its simplified, it's easier for them to understand, easier for them to make adjustments to change some of the variables, hit the run button again, and get different uh, what if scenario planning results. Okay, so we're going to go through that quite a bit. But the main concept we're going to talk about is systems thinking. System thinking pretty much has three different types, three different paradigms. System dynamics, let me get, the, let me get my laser going. Okay, there it is. System dynamics, agent-based modeling, and discrete event. We're going to discuss all three of these uh, with system dynamics being a top-down view. They call it the 10,000 meter view or a 30,000 foot uh, view. Right? Agent-based modeling is when you're actually modeling individuals. It could be individual human beings. It could be cars. It could be restaurants. It's some type of individual that you're actually modeling. And discrete event modeling is a process-centric type of modeling that is sequential. It's like uh, used a lot in supply chain management and manufacturing. But in our capstone, we're going to show how all three of those paradigms of modeling can be used by the modeler to look at any particular problem. It just, you just decide what level and what type um, um, of modeling you actually want to do. And this is for a grocery store. You can look at system dynamics with stocks and flows and feedback loops. Um, you can look at the process of people arriving at a supermarket and how they actually go through the process of uh, checking out. Or you can look at the individual agents and why people make their decisions on choosing that particular uh, grocery store over others. Okay? So you can do modeling in all three of those different paradigms. We're going to focus on system dynamics okay? in the actual capstone. And oh, let me go back. And just to let you know that we're going to do all the things David talked about. So the format and the framework for the, for the capstone is exactly what David explained. It's just a, that when it comes to the, the um, quantitative analysis, we're going to use uh, system dynamics. And what system dynamics is real quickly, there's four main components of it, stocks, flows, converters, and feedback loops. Right? And that's what it looks like. Okay? Pretty straightforward, easy to understand. The coolest thing about this is these are the icons used throughout planet Earth. So if you learn system dynamics and modeling and simulation, you'll learn that stocks are represented by rectangles. If you go to Brazil and you're in the conference there, a system dynamicist will know that, that that's the stock accumulation of something, they'll know that valve is, is a flow like a verb, and then your different variables. Okay? So what you're doing is you're going to be learning something akin to, say, music or math, where the symbology is pretty much the same wherever you go on planet Earth. Okay? So you definitely use those. We're going to do um, a policy modeling paragraph where you actually frame what your model is and what your actual topic is in very distinct, concrete terms. Because what happens a lot of times when there's um, uh, like a workshop gets together or a task group gets together to try to solve a problem, especially in the public sector, uh, they'll have these, these workshops. Everyone gets together. Great ideas come about. People write on whiteboards. They flip the, the paper, right, the butcher block. Fantastic ideas come about. And they come out with some really great ideas. But when everyone then goes back to their own organization and you say, well, what, did we really, what really came out of that workshop? there'll be 10, 12, 15, who knows the number of different ideas. By building a policy modeling paragraph, when you leave a particular workshop or, or, um, uh, or group, everyone will know exactly what you're trying to do. Right? And the policy modeling paragraph 
It starts with Once Upon a Time, and of course that's a nice little childhood story, fable kind of starting, but there is a value to starting it saying Once Upon a Time. Once Upon a Time puts the, that issue in a temporal dimension. It tells everyone that, look, you know what? Whatever we're looking at, it started before we started looking at it, and it's going to continue after we stop looking at it, right? So the, it puts it in a temporal dimension, and system dynamics is behaviors over time. So then uh, when you build your policy modeling paragraph and in the capstone, everyone will do one of these for your individual project. We'll have group projects at the beginning so that you learn the process of system dynamic modeling and simulation, but then you're going to pick your own project uh, and actually create one of the policy modeling paragraphs. Right? And you just throw some of these kind of things in there. Now models in the system dynamics world in modeling and simulation can get pretty complex. However, this one, when you look at this though, you might be like, all right, all right, nerds, get out of here. Don't, we don't want to see anything, right? Most people kind of run away from this. However, recognize that still it's just the same icons that you saw before. That one's just a little bit rounded on the corners, but it's still a stock, right? The capital and orders is a stock. The capital stock, flow, boundary models, variables, right? So models can get very complex. Your model's going to get complex. But when you walk through it based on your research, your analysis, your data, you're going to be able to understand that model and present that model. But like I said, models can get complex. They can get really complex, right? Now, you wouldn't normally show this to the, to the boss or the decision maker, right? However, real world, it's what happens in the real world, that was shown to those decision makers. Anyone know the gentleman in the middle? Okay. A hint, former Secretary of Defense, Robert Gates, right? And the gentleman on the right, uh, General Stanley McChrystal, he was in charge of all of CENTCOM for a specific amount of time. Um, and that was presented to him. And General McChrystal made a joke, when they understand this slide, they would have won the war. So everybody, ha, 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 laughs, jokes, blah, blah, blah. It was a good old time. However, what they missed is that this is doggone brilliant. I know the guys that actually made this. This is a brilliant model. But the way it was presented made it such that people didn't even look at it and they joked about it. right? So what you're going to learn is how to actually present your data right, in your model. And we're going to build interactive interfaces, also known as flight simulators a lot in the business world, or dashboards. right? So we're going to create a dashboard, something like this, with knobs on it, switches, little run buttons so people can start and stop things. right? So that's not nearly as intimidating as your actual model is going to be. Right? That's just another view of a an interface, and this is the one that came right out of the Stella Architect software. Um, we've got access to the software. It's uh, $3,000 software, so you're going to have to buy a copy of that. But other than, no, no I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. They'll be like, check this capstone off the list. <laughs> no, that's the actual retail value. Uh, there's an academic uh, cost, and we actually have a, a much, much uh, discounted rate. So. What's the name of that software? Stella Architect. Okay. And I highly recommend you go to the website, IC Systems, and then just kind of click through and it'll show what, I, what uh, Stella Architect can do. Okay? But notice that that's a much more simplified version, but what runs this particular interface is a model that you'll actually build. Okay, okay now this is just uh, some of the capstone components, um, kind of just taken right out of the, the capstone curriculum. Be a couple extra ones there, specifically the building of a system dynamics model. Right? You're going to actually have your policy modeling paragraph, you're going to build a model, and you're going to have an interactive uh, interface, a dashboard. So you're going to actually build um, actual running, simulatable models. Okay. Was that a question or a big stretch? I, I guess. Okay, so that's pretty much uh, all I have. Um, I hope uh, you consider the policy modeling and simulation a capstone. I'd be happy to have uh, any of you guys in the class. Okay. Sir? Uh, you would need to have completed like calculus 15, <laughs> if that is it. No, it, it's um, you don't have to have any. I won't say any. You should know a little bit of math. You, you won't have to have any advanced mathematical knowledge. It's not. We're not going to have any calculus. Uh, the highest is like algebra two, maybe just in figuring out okay what the actual relationships between some variables will be. So um, you won't be doing any statistical analysis, but you may use statistics to provide the values for a particular variable that you have, right? So the best thing ever, 
And I usually don't even tell people, so that's kind of like a trick question. I usually don't even tell anybody that the software is first order differential equations and calculus. So that's really what you'll be doing, but you're not going to have to do it. The software does it. Right? Mainly the most important thing to be a very good modeler is two things, pencil and your brain. Right? That you think through your problem and you just write it down on paper or type it in. Right? So you come up with that model and you'll constantly be asking yourself, what about this? What about that? You'll be doing your own iterative storytelling. You'll tell a story, you'll run that model, and then as you start building that model, more of your story, you're going to start asking yourself more questions, you'll ask in your group more questions, and your model will get much more significant. Right? So, long-winded answer, you don't have to have any um, advanced math knowledge whatsoever. Right? Okay. And with that, do you have any uh, little questions or big questions? That, I'm sorry? Some examples of recent projects. Uh, the, the students have done? Well, we just, uh, in the summer, the last two summers, we've taught uh, the Young African Leader um, Institute, and we had 25 uh, super, you know, superstars from different African countries come here, and they built models. They were at ground zero, didn't even know what system dynamics is, and in the six weeks uh, course, we were able to kind of get them up to hero status where they built some very substantial, significant models on reducing... Um, Childhood mortality, uh, increasing cassava, that's like a very popular vegetable or something like that, uh, production. So agricultural production, healthcare outcomes. Um, one gentleman from uh, Malawi did uh, a model on how to make more effective use of uh, pharmaceuticals. So he was in charge of pharmaceutical distribution for his whole country built a system dynamic model that, that integrated real data and then how to change things or make the most for, uh, benefits for that particular behavior over time, the distribution of pharmaceuticals. Where there's just a, every single thing can be modeled and what you'll find is at the beginning of our, our capstone, we go through a drill and I'll show you how every single thing can be modeled, right? whether it's a tangible or intangible thing. We can model the number of students that attend the John Glenn College of Public Affairs, we can model the amount of love that you have for someone, right? We can model uh, the frustration that Romeo and Juliet's parents had that those two were like loving each other, right? So anything tangible or intangible can be modeled because it's an accumulation of something, right? It's a noun, person, place, thing, right? And that's what the stocks are. So and certain things increase the stock, the amount of, of something, certain things decrease. And what ends up happening is, and what a lot of people don't, don't get from a uh, policy standpoint, is all these things that are increasing and decreasing something, they happen every day. Right? So if the, if the stock is um, weight, to, there's certain things increasing weight, caloric intake, and decreasing uh, weight, physical activity, are happening at the same time. Right? So the same day, both of those are happening. And that's what happens in the real world. Things are increasing and decreasing, and the difference of that is what is going to be your resulting amount in your stock. Right? And that's some of the things that we'll talk about uh, in the capstone. And you'll take your particular project and build a model.